So as usual, when new releases come out, this is a bit of a character trait of mine that I sort of repel against them. And I think, no, I'm not interested. I don't, don't want to look at them. And I was exactly the same with the Tudor Black Bay Pro. I thought, eh, it's all right. Neither here nor there. I can take it or leave it. But then I picked it up and I was like, fuck me, that is a nice watch. So yeah, the Tudor Black Bay Pro, a massive, massive surprise to me. My mate Gary came up here, he is uh, <laughs> showcasing the watch. We had a couple of beers, even brought a bottle of wine with him. So top gent for bringing the watch up so we could film it and have a night together. It was really good fun. Thank you, pal. So yeah, the Tudor Black Bay Pro, massive surprise to me. I just, I wasn't interested at all. I, some watches you look at, you think, yeah, I need to get hands on with them. Need to try them on, need to look at them. But yeah, Tudor's new release for me was neither here nor there, but... As always, I've always said in previous videos, you've got to get hands on, you've got to try them, you've got to experience them for yourself before you can form an opinion of them. And I've been guilty of that, unfortunately. But yeah, this watch, there's a lot of nice things to like. One of the main things is the yellow hand. Now, this yellow is bordering on orange. And obviously, orange, the Rolex Explorer 2 from a few decades ago, this is what this watch is based upon. But yeah, that yellow, it, as I say, it is definitely yellow, but it's as close to orange as it can be before becoming orange. And I think they've just, it really is a nice colour and it, it's distant enough from the original model that they're taking the design from. But yeah, it's a really, I can't describe it any other way than I think it looks really, really sexy on the watch. Now, probably a game changer for Tudor bracelets on the whole is the clasp and now the added micro adjustment. Surely it won't be long before all black bays get this brilliant, brilliant upgrade. It's a more attractive clasp, obviously more useful to most people out there and it's just going to be a game changer. I've owned several black bays in the past. I've owned the 41, the 39, a micro adjustment or not micro adjustment, but a lack of a perfect fit has been an issue with all them watches. A micro adjustment will definitely help get a better fit. Now for me, it is an absolute game changer, better looking. And as I say, most people will give that a 10 out of 10 for improvements, a real winner in my eyes. Now, one of the things I like about this watch is the size and the thickness. Now, I'll clarify that in a second because one of the things I go on to say I don't like is the thickness. Now, the thickness of this watch has been the biggest talking point. It's 14.5 mil thick. And yeah, there's no getting away. That is a big, thick watch but it's only 39 mil. Now, I've tried the watch on, I've worn it for a, a period of time and the thickness it didn't seem too thick, it didn't feel too thick, it didn't feel top heavy. That's a really good thing. Now, if you put that thickness and that movement into the 41 mil range, I think it does become a problem because you've got a larger watch, 41 mil, and you've got the added thickness. But for me, the 14.5 thick in a 39 mil works perfectly. Yeah, you'd like it thinner in an ideal world, but it doesn't detract from the watch in any way, shape or form for me. Now, as always, on all Tudor watches, Loom is absolutely top notch. One would even go as far to say, oh la la. It is. It's a really fantastic quality that Tudor watches have. Loom, again, a total nonsensical, non-needed thing. But then again, nobody really needs a tool watch in today's society, do they? We just want them. We just love them. And yeah, the Loom is just glorious. So I always advise people, if you're a real watch addict, get a Loom torch off eBay, off Amazon. I think they're about eight quid and you'll just have endless hours of fun. Maybe minutes. So for about £3,000, this watch is going to come with a GMT feature and it's a fixed bezel GMT feature. Is uh, is it needed unless you're traveling? I don't know many people that travel numerous different countries in life, but having a GMT fee feature for £3,000 is a nice touch. I've had a GMT feature in the past and I struggled to find a time to set it to. Gary had it set to local time. So when it's six o'clock, it's six o'clock on both hands. So again, it's just trying to find a use for the GMT, but it's a nice feature to have. And as I say, it's a really good price is this watch. Now, as we previously discussed, this watch is a 39 mil case with a 14.5 mil thickness. That combination works really well. It, it's not to be worried about. I would definitely encourage anybody to go and try this watch on because I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. 20 mil lugs and this watch is going to look absolutely mint on leather straps and NATOs. And a 47 mil lug to lug means this watch is really wearable for most rich wrist sizes. 
just a smidge over £3,000 cost. You're probably not going to get much discount on a brand new Tudor at the moment, but it's probably worth every penny in all honesty. It's got the MT5652, which is a COSC certified movement. So you've got the accuracy, the in-house build, the 70-hour power reserve. Again, amazing stats, to be honest. 200 meters water resistance there, which is more than enough for anybody. Sapphire crystal, which you'd kind of expect, but it is domed. And what I didn't actually notice until I checked into the watch is it's a domed dial. Now, yeah, nice, fair enough, but I didn't notice it at the time. And it's got a screw down crown, which you'd kind of expect, along with a fixed bezel. Now, some of the things I don't like about this watch, and it's maybe a little bit unfair of me to say this, but I don't like the thickness. <laughs> now, I know I said it's not an issue, but yeah, I'm talking ideal world scenario that maybe if this watch was just a little bit thinner, you could put it in that perfect watch category. Not the end of the world, as I say, it really does work well, but yeah, the thickness is something that maybe I would like to tweak. The all steel fixed bezel for me, that's probably my least favorite option when I'm talking about bezels. I prefer ceramic, I probably prefer something that turns, Aluminium I'd even chose over an all steel fixed bezel. Now, I've put it in the dislike section because it's my least favorite bezel, but I don't particularly not like this bezel. I think it works really well on the watch. I just needed to put something in the dislike section. But something that I genuinely, genuinely hate on this watch and other Tudors for that matter. And as all watch addicts, you think about watches on a daily basis, you think about what your next watch is and you give yourself bullshit excuses to go and buy that watch. And one of my excuses is you sh every watch addict should have a Tudor in the collection. And I genuinely believe that. So then I start looking at Tudors and what I should buy and what I should get in the collection. And the thing that stops me from buying a Tudor on a very regular basis is the fake rivets. They absolutely drive me fucking insane. I just think they're pointless. I don't think they look good. And I think it completely detracts from what is otherwise an, a near perfect watch. A lot of the Black Bay range are absolutely sexy looking watches. But then you look at the rivets and you think, what is the fucking point? If the GMT hand on this watch didn't move and it was just for show, everyone would be questioning it. What's the point? And the, the rivets obviously not as important as something on the dial, but yeah, I just think it really detracts from the watch. And I think if you took away those fake rivets and went back to the original bracelet that the Black Base first had when they came out, these watches would probably be even more popular than they are. So yeah, the rivets for me are a big, big no-no. And the North Flag, the Tudor North Flag, which got discontinued recently, same color combination, tool watch vibe, 70 hour power reserve in both. Why did they flog the Black Bay range? Well, they're not flogging a dead horse because that dead horse is winning most races. It's a great design and they keep using it and it's going to be a winner is this watch. But why didn't they bring out a North Flag 2 and incorporate what they've done with this new Black Bay Pro and put it into a North Flag 2 just to broaden their, broaden their horizon a little bit. I just think calling something a Black Bay constantly is becoming, for me, a little bit tedious. Now, it's not the end of the world and it's going to be a real winner of a watch, but for me, yeah, you just think, well, you can't call everything a Black Bay because it's going to be an instant commercial success. So for me, that is a little bit annoying. But ultimately, overall, massively surprised with how good this watch is. Big thanks to Gary for loaning it in. It's a really good looking wearable watch. The micro adjustment is a game changer. And for me, would I have one in the collection? I would, even though I'm going leaning more towards, you know, polished center links and more dressy watches as I, I change my collection and the way I feel about watches. This is the kind of watch that would fit in any collection ultimately. So guys, let me know what you think of the watch and I'll see you in the next one.